is. That will have impact. So next slide, please. Um, March 2019, I wrote, um, I developed this method called data verbalization. It reached the Guardian. And essentially, I mean, I'll explain it more in a, in a bit, but essentially, I was going to a conference in New Orleans. I was a keynote speaker at the American Society of Criminology. I looked at my conference speech and I just ripped it up. I said, no, nah, I can't do this. So what I did, I printed another copy off. I reread it. I thought this is about mass incarceration. It was an important speech. So I deconstructed it, took all the key themes out, rhymed it, put it to hip hop, went into the community, found three hip hop producers. We produced a track. It went from 20 minutes down to 11 minutes. We used a jazz sample with a hip hop beat. We put it out there and I, I was just, I thought I just left it. They put it on hip hop programs. They put it on music programs. It was an 11 minute track, but the way we chopped up the lyrics, it sounded, it felt like it was five minutes. Anyway, we emailed it to, we sent it over to Buster Rhymes. We sent it to Black Lives Matter and we had millions. And what I discovered is a way to bring my research back to the streets. So it meant that people in the community could listen to research without having to read and write. And the Guardian got hold of it, did a big feature article, and it went around the world. And I was getting requests from India, Colombia, all over the world. Because for once, I'd taken a creative approach to bring research findings to people that couldn't read and write. And that's what broke the mold on this. So, as I said here, all systems change. Next. So, data verbalization. Um, all it is is communicating and disseminating research using performance. Um, I voiced everything. We did an album. I then started doing stuff for other academics. What was important about the method, uh, and, and, and a recent project in Edinburgh, at the, uh, Edinburgh University on cryptocurrency, they'd had... 200 pages of engineering data around an app that it created around cryptocurrency. And the, the data was very dense. So they wanted to communicate the essence of the data to potential investors and other people. So they gave it to me and I took 200 pages of research data and boiled it down into 12 verses. And we called it, um, I called it to be or not to be crypto, a soliloquy in four provocations. So what I did, I took the data and from it, I found a story and I started to ask questions because it was for Oxfam in Australia. I said, have you consulted the, the Aboriginals? No. Did you consider the materials that were in this app and where it comes from? No. So I took the data, I said, yes, it's a great app. But then what I did, I look at the ethics of the choices the engineers made and it made them think twice about the whole notion about if you're going to construct an app, you have to think ethically about who this is going to affect, who you consult. And data verbalization was perfect for that. And I performed it live and it went down well. So that's the method. That's data verbalization. Next. Um, it works, as you can see in front of you, you take the data, you deconstruct it with words, music, message. That generates the impact through performance. And the music and words contains the values. So what I build into it is once you get the commission on it. So if I'm communicating it to the streets, then the values of what's taking place on the streets is built in. And that's where the poetic license comes in. And the way I would describe it is the way that Charles Dickens used to perform his books. He wouldn't perform the whole book. He'd perform extracts. He'd perform a deconstructed version. And then later on, we got the film. So data verbalization doesn't replace the original research. What data verbalization does, it's an adaptation of that actually has more impact because it presents the consumer or the individual who's commissioning you with the right kind of information. So you imagine from a marketing point of view where you decided to present for a client everything through a Japanese haiku where you can go five, seven, five syllables or a sonnet or a song lyric. And what I've found is, um, could take a complex idea, we could be COVID, could be diabetes. I can deconstruct it and present it back through a song, through 
um, a hip hop lyric, uh, a libretto, yeah, using classical music. So there's no there's no limits because data visualization for me falls down if the presenter doesn't know how to speak. It's great to look at charts, but if you have to speak, you've got to be entertaining. You've got to make it fun. But by and large, my observation of data visualization, it's not that interesting. Whereas with this, you could close your eyes, lie back and look at the ceiling. You're going to be able to understand it because it's catchy. I can build a chorus in and I can present it that way. So that's the framework for data verbalization. Next. That's my book. Um, I did an album. I did several things for other academics. It went around the world. The Guardian reported on it. I was in the Sunday Times alternative rich list. So that was fun. And then somebody comes along and says, um, why don't you write the book? And I was like, nah. Routledge, one of the world's leading publishers, they're not going to buy it. And I remember Spike Lee uh, with the film Black Klansman. You know, it was a six-line pitch. Black man joins Ku Klux Klan. And I thought, well, if he, if he can do it, well, I'm going to do it with my book. So I got in touch with Routledge and they said, you know, you got, is there a book you want to do? I said, yeah. I said, I want to do a book where I speak research. From the commission, from the cut, when I wrote the proposal to the actual commission was about six weeks. Normally it takes six months to a year, but they'd never heard anything like it. There's the book. It's gone around the world. So academics it says data verbalization for researchers, but people around the world look at my book because everybody's now looking for a way to market their work using cultural reference points such as music. And it makes no difference what music it is. It could be indigenous music. It makes no difference. It's the combination of deconstructing data, repackaging it with music, putting it out there on platforms or live, and it has it has much more impact. And we've proven we've got the data to we've got the evidence to support that. So that's the book. Next. Um, something you may be interested in. Digital storytelling is marketing. Now, I know this is done. But now, people are coming to me and say, yo, mine. Digital storytelling. What, what's your understanding digital storytelling? Well, it's quite simple. If I want to look at knife crime, if I want to look at diabetes, if I want to look at um, COVID, the statistics scare people, creates moral panic. If we look at right now we're in the credit crunch, we've got poverty crisis, we've got Ukraine. How do you send a reassuring message that it's going to be okay, but it's going to be a bumpy ride? That's not what the data is saying. It says it's going to be catastrophic, words like catastrophic, terrible. So my digital market, my digital storytelling is to use Aesop's fables, is to use mythology of folklore to repackage those things and use everything from animation to other forms of way but on a digital platform whether it's twitter instagram so once again taking data verbalization and using ancient wisdom i can put the two together and i can sell a different message so for instance there's a lot of people at the moment worried about losing their jobs who've got skills well, digital platforms offer a lot of opportunities around education. They offer a lot of opportunities to take stories. I know I work with gangs and I can tell you when I'm, if I go onto Instagram, Instagram live, they'll tune in and listen to me because the stories that I'm telling are not focused on about their badness. What I'm focused on is what can they do to stop offending? What can they do to change? And I'm speaking it and presenting it in a vernacular they relate to. So for me, digital storytelling is marketing. It's about marketing that you don't have to behave bad. You don't have to stab, shoot, kidnap, sell drugs. So the stories I tell will give examples of throughout history how you can move beyond that. So I do a lot of stories about slaves and how slaves bought their freedom and how slaves um, went on to do great things. So again, it's creating digital storytelling